Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Crypto Tips. My name is Heidi, and today we are continuing on this Trezor tutorial journey. Uh, the past video, we did an unboxing and an initial setup process. So now that we have our, our private keys uh, stowed and locked away securely, we have the Trezor Suite application downloaded onto our computer. We have the pin set on our device. Now we're ready to send some coins off of centralized exchanges and into our own own custody and ownership and beautiful ability of cryptocurrencies to give yourself true ownership over your wealth. Okay, let's go. So here on the application, I do have to point out they have this really helpful for anyone who is new to cryptocurrencies. Scammers are everywhere. Be wary. Don't buy into the panic they are trying to instigate from you. Uh, it says, beware of phishing. Trezor users are being targeted by recent phishing attacks. Basically, if you had signed up for Trezor's newsletter, that email list has been hacked. And so now scammers know that your email or that email was associated with the Trezor user, or at least they're interested in Trezor. So they usually use that information to inspire fear in you to make you do something irrational, like give away your seed phrase and to basically give them access to your crypto. But of course, they phrase it in a much different way. Um, never enter your recovery seeds anywhere unless the physical Trezor device instructs you to do so and you confirm your choice on your Trezor. So doesn't matter if it's coming from an email, doesn't matter if it's coming from the application, if it's coming from your actual Trezor device, maybe then take it a little bit more seriously. But again, never do anything. Always contact the official social media channels of Trezor. Um, you can go to trezor.io, classic. They have all their official links there, and then you can reach out to their team and ask them what's actually happening and if you should indeed be concerned and follow through with the steps that you think you should take. Now, let's go ahead and, and activate the coins. It says here, select cryptocurrencies to show in Trezor Suite. You can change this setting at any time. Some coins are ERC-20 tokens and can be used by enabling Ethereum below. So right off the bat, this is much more different than it is with Ledger Live. If you guys have ever used Ledger and Ledger Live, you have to manage manually add each account for whatever coin you want to be storing on your device with Trezor. Once you have it set up, any coin that is currently integrated with Trezor and the Trezor suite is available to you here and now, which is really user-friendly and a lot less of a headache. Um, now again, the Trezor that I'm using today is a Trezor Model T. So with the Trezor Model T compared to the Trezor 1, the Trezor Model T also gives you access to store uh, XRP, Monero, Tezos, Cardano, and uh, EOS. So you can do that all within the Model T, whether or not that's also within the Trezor suite as the interaction, as the interface for you to do so is not yet seen. Cause again, I've never used a Trezor before, so we will find out. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and choose some coins that maybe I might want to one day use to store on my Trezor. Bitcoin, yeah. Ethereum, sure. Tons of uh, Ethereum classic, or I'm, I'm sorry, tons of Ethereum tokens to be stored there. We'll just start with those basic ones, okay? Also available for the testnet, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Cardano. So go ahead and we'll just start with those from now. And again, I can always go back and add more. So we're going to go ahead and complete setup here. And let's see, I can edit the name, change the home screen. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> How, why is why is Matos an option for <laughs> the background? That's ridiculous. Uh, here we go. Keep calm and huddle. There we go. Um, access suite. We'd like to access the suite right now. It changes the background on the actual device. Uh, okay, that's definitely not necessary. Just a little flamboyant option for you to do on your Trezor. Uh, now it says here, passphrase entry. Please type your passphrase on the connected host. Uh, if you did an advanced setup on this device, you could create a custom passphrase that you make up and then you use that to as an additional layer of security, something that was never generated through encryption uh, through the software of Trezor something that came from your own brain. So I'm just going to go ahead, ahead here and click on the standard wallet no passphrase. 
And because I don't have anything stored in this wallet is brand stinking new. My portfolio shows zero dollars. Uh, your wallet is ready to use. In the meantime, make sure you have completed all security steps below. And yes, I have. Uh, here we have them just in case. Backup created. Yes, it's been created and written down. The pin has been enabled. Uh, passphrase enabled. I have not done that yet. Uh, again, just trying to make it really basic here for you guys. Uh, and discrete mode, temporarily hide your balances. Love that, especially for doing tutorials and for protecting my privacy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and enable that too. So let's say we want to send some coins. Bitcoin and Ethereum were the only ones that I selected right at the start here. So that's why they're here on the screen now. If you wanna add other coins, you can go ahead here and click the plus button. So 14 crypto, not a big number right off the bat. Um, that's just maybe what is available on this Trezor suite. Um, just like with Ledger, you can use other wallet interfaces that have integrated with the hardware wallet. For example, Ledger and Trezor, you can both use on mycrypto.com, which is like an independent wallet, uh, uh, Ethereum wallet provider. Also, Electrum wallet for Bitcoin, MetaMask. You, these are all kind of wallets and wallet interfaces that have integrated with hardware wallets. So maybe through those interfaces, you can store more coins as well. Okay, so I go back to my dashboard. We can click receive. And this is for Bitcoin. If I wanted to deposit, let's say Ethereum, I'm gonna go ahead and click Ethereum here. Again, if I had selected all the coins that are available within the Trezor suite, they would all be selected here. So there's no need to add or remove uh, the applications or the accounts on your physical device. Like the ledger requires you to add uh, the individual accounts onto your physical device. Trezor does not. So that's a time saver. We're going to deposit Ethereum. There's an option here to buy Ethereum. I'm going to click it just to see what they have, who they have partnered with. It looks like Infinity. Um, so that is probably the exchange that they have partnered with to provide liquidity for these trades. Please read the terms of use before you decide to engage in any trading activity within your hardware wallet applications, whether it's Ledger Live or this Trezor Suite. Just because it's on your hardware wallet doesn't mean that they're not trying to collect data and wherever they're collecting that data, you don't necessarily want that in the hands of third parties. So anyway, I am not going to be buying ETH that way. But if you would like to deposit coins into this wallet, you click receive Ethereum here. And this is the address. This is not the full address. It fades away here. Uh, your public address. So here is the Ethereum receiving address. If you were to be sending this from your mobile wallet, which I don't use, uh, you could use the QR code here again and down below there, they have the full address display displayed as well. And when you, when you're, it's really important when you are confirming the address that you want to make uh, the deposit into onto your device here, it is so important that you make sure the address displayed on the application on your computer is the same address that is shown on your device. That is how you will guarantee that the coins are going in the right spot, that you're not sending them to a scammer account. The address that is being displayed on your device is the most important part of verifying that it's actually the legitimate address that you want to send your coins to. So go ahead and go through. I don't care how long it takes, it's worth it. <laughs> and you, you verify that everything is the same that matches what you're seeing on your computer screen to what you're seeing on your device. And once you are, once you are sure, go ahead and click on the green uh, check mark to confirm. Also, another thing with Ethereum specifically is because it's a smart contract blockchain, you can store all Ethereum-based tokens within an Ethereum wallet. Ethereum is kind of like the motherboard, the mother blockchain, and everything that's built on top of Ethereum is compatible with Ethereum wallets. Um, you can easily go to coingecko.com and click on the, the coin that you're interested in. And if you look there, it'll tell you if it's an Ethereum-based token or not. It'll say ERC20. Um, also, the contract address will start with 0x. It's another way to, to make sure that it's actually Ethereum 
Um, and if you had Ethereum tokens stored on this wallet you, and you can't see it because you're freaking out, you just see Ethereum here on the overview, you can click on the tokens tab here and it'll show you your tokens listed here. Um, if we wanted to add a token, you can customize, uh, you can add the ERC token address here. And if you want to know how to find the address of the right cryptocurrency that you want to, or the right Ethereum based token that you want to add here, watch the video that I've linked right here in the upper right hand corner. And that will explain it to you. I'm not going to get into it here for the sake of time. I've made so many videos that go over things like this. Uh, so feel free to explore the rest of this channel as well, especially if you guys are new. Um, so that is the basic way of how to deposit coins into uh, Trezor. If I had a balance, it would show here. And if you'd like to send the coins out of the wallet, you go ahead and click send. You will need to have an address to send the coins to. Make sure if you're sending Ethereum, you are sending it to another Ethereum address. Uh, and same with Bitcoin, send Bitcoin to a Bitcoin address. You cannot send Bitcoin to an Ethereum address thinking that's how you make a trade. That is how you lose coins. Uh, so always reference it's the correct type of address that you are inputting here. You'll fill out here uh, how much you want to send. If you want to send everything that you have in your wallet, go ahead and click send max. Of course, I don't have anything because there's no funds in this wallet currently. You can also choose the fees. With Ethereum, the gas fees, it can be a make or break situation for if or when you send a transaction. They become kind of expensive. They have uh, the normal gas price here and gas limit, like kind of what they would uh, recommend for you to use to make sure that your transaction goes through in a timely manner and it doesn't get stuck in the mempool for like weeks on end. Or if you know how to choose, you know, how to really pinpoint uh, what is actually needed for the gap to pay uh, the gas fees for your transaction to go through, go ahead and click custom here. You can set your gas limit and your gas price. And if you guys want to know how to know what you should be paying in, in Ethereum fees, don't you know I did a video on it? And again, it's going to be up here in the upper right hand corner. I highly recommend you check it out. It can send, it can save you lots of money. Um, okay. So anyway, and then you can click in uh, review and send. And as always, because this is a hardware wallet and because you are in control of the private keys, when you click on this review and send, you'll be shown the amount that you are sending, the address you're sending it to, and the amount of fees you'll be paying for that transaction on your device. And you'll need to confirm all that information or not confirm the information if you don't want to send it. Um, you can confirm it by clicking again on that green check mark. And then from there, it will send the transaction and you'll be able to see the transaction show up uh, here in the transaction history of your specific account that you've sent the coins from. So that's it for the tutorial on how to you know, generally use your Trezor for depositing and sending coins. As I dig more and more into Trezor and the Trezor suite, if there's any capabilities of, for example, staking your coins on the Trezor suite using your Trezor, I will be doing videos and tutorials on that as well. So if you're interested, be sure to hit subscribe and like on this video. So until, the mean, until then, I hope you're staying happy and healthy. I'll see you.